A dastardly plot was hatched by someone to blow Speed Robertson and Harry Phelps to smithereens when they made one of the crashes necessary in filming the air picture Coffin Nails. A live bomb had been substituted for one of the dummy projectiles carried on the P-38 flown by Speed. Jimmy Allen discovered the plot through the confession of Mike Mancuso, mechanic who was under Baloo's control. But in the meantime, Speed and Harry Phelps had already taken off. In desperation, Jimmy jumped into another P-38 and with Roy Phelps in the plane with him, zoomed from the field to warn his chum. But Speed failed to understand his chum's signals. Having exhausted every other device, Jimmy took a dangerous chance. In a furious, roaring dive, he forced his plane past speed and made the crash himself. The wildest excitement prevails among those on the ground when they see the wrong ship crashing into the dummy hut. Grace Scott, that wasn't Speed Robertson. Hurry up, everyone. Lend a hand. Hey, Jimmy. Jim, are you all right? He didn't answer. He may be badly hurt. Quick, call a doctor. Come on, you fellas. Tear that ship to pieces. Pull Jimmy and Roy out of there. Alan, speak up. Are you all right? Come on, you fellas. Lift him up and lay him on his piece of canvas. Yes, right here. That'll be all right. Hurry up. Here's Dr. Parker. Jimmy, Jimmy, say something, Jimmy. Yeah, just a minute, boys. Give me some room here. Alan Jimmy. seems to be unconscious. Roy Phelps is trying to say something. Uh, where am I? Now, just a minute. You're all right, young man. You're on the ground here. Where's Jimmy? Jimmy Allen. Is he all right? We don't know yet. He's still unconscious. What about it, Doc? Well, I haven't found any broken bones yet. I, I think he's just dazed. Those cuts on his face look pretty bad. Yeah, let me look. No, oh, no, those are not serious. Mere surface scratches is all. Uh, just a second. Uh, I thought so. Just one tooth knocked out. I'm surprised there weren't more. I've seen faces like that many a time. In fact, I've had a few myself. Comes to getting a little too well acquainted with your instrument panel. What do you think, Doctor? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with Alan. Mm -hmm. He's just punch drunk from the shock of the crash. Here, uh, uh, wipe his face off, one of you fellows, will you? Yeah. Here. He'll come to in a minute. Now, let me take a look at Roy. I'm pretty sure I'm all right, Doc. I was in the jump seat, and Jimmy took the worst of things up front. Well, I still and let the sawbones look you over. Okay. What do you say, Doc? Well, his legs are all right, and those arms seem to be all right, too. Feel any bad sore spots anywhere, Phelps? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, about 15 or 20 of them. No, no, I don't mean that. Have you got any severe pains anywhere? Oh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think you'll be all right in a few minutes. Yeah. Let me put some of this antiseptic on your scratches. Oh, ouch. Gee, that stuff stings, Doc. Hey, look. I think Jimmy's coming, too. I believe you're right. What? What happened? You crashed a ship, Jim. And believe me, you did a swell job of it. I'll say you did. My cameramen are tickled pink. They say it's the most realistic crash scene they've ever filmed. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm glad it was a good one. It was too good, if you ask me. But how do you feel, Jim? I, I feel all right, Flash. Kind of funny in spots. You know, Flash... Flash before I forget, quick, signal speed. What do you mean, Jim? That bomb, Flash. If speed sets his ship down too hard, it'll explode. Great Scott. I was so worried about you, I forgot about speed. He's coming in right now. I'll run out and do my best to signal him to come in easy. What sort of nonsense is this? What's all this about a bomb? Well, you see, that's why I... Ooh, go easy with that stuff, Doc. It hurts like the dickens. No, 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 just a second. It'll hurt for a second, Alan, but it'll be good for you. We don't want to have any infection in those cuts. Now, what's this again, Alan, about bombs? Well, that's why I did the crash instead of speed. I couldn't understand why you came down and did that crash. Your ship wasn't even prepared for it, was it? No, but I couldn't signal speed not to come down, so I dove past them and did the crash myself. But I still don't understand what you said about the bombs. After speed had taken off, I found out that one of the dummy bombs on this ship was not a dummy bomb at all, but a real live one. Why, that's murder. Where is the scoundrel? I'll have his neck for this. He disappeared after telling me about it. But he must be around here someplace. Oh, we'll get that bird all right. I'll say we will. We'll have nothing like that going on around here. What did he do it for? Well, he said someone else made him do it. Who? He didn't say. But I have my own suspicions. We'll get hold of him and make him tell. Jimmy! Hey, where's Jimmy? <laughs> right here, Speed. Ah, you crazy kid. 
Jim, what did you want to do that for? I tried to warn you, Steve. Warn me? What in the world are you talking about? Oh, I did my best, but, well, you just didn't seem to catch on. Well, I don't get it, Jim. I ah, but never mind that right now. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel okay. I'm kind of sore all over. I've got some scratches on my face and one tooth knocked out. But outside of that, I'm feeling pretty swell. Well, what about it, Doctor? What did you find out? Well, I think he's all right, Robertson. I haven't been able to find any broken bones so far. Of course, he's got quite a few scratches and small cuts, but those aren't serious. He's bound to feel sore for a few days, but he'll recover fast. He's a healthy young animal, you know. Well, how about internal injuries? It's easy to get those in a crash like this. No, I don't think so. You don't feel any severe pains anywhere, do you, Alan? No, I don't. Well, now, just a minute. Just uh, stretch out on your back here. Let me do a little poking around here. Uh, does, does that hurt? No. Well, how about that? No, sir. Oh, he's all right. Give him a couple of hours rest and a good meal, and he'll be raring to fly again this afternoon. Well, well, he won't do any flying this afternoon. That young scamp is going to stay on the ground for a day or so. But look, now that you're all right, let's get back to this other business. What were you trying to tell me up there, Jim? Well, I was trying to signal you to go down and land, Speed. Go down and land? I thought you were trying to tell me you were going to watch this crash from the air. Oh, gee, Speed. You should have known that I wouldn't be up in the air while you were making a crash. I'd have been too anxious about you. I'd have been right down here next to the crash to help pull you out. Well, well, what were you trying to signal me to land for, Jim? Well, look, where's Flash? Didn't he run out just now to warn you to make an easy landing? Make an easy landing? Why, well, he came running out on the field like a madman, waving his arms like a windmill. I thought... I thought he meant to get on the ground in a hurry because... Because, well, I thought you were hurt pretty bad. So I got on the ground just as quick as I could. Flash nearly blew up. Then after I did get on the ground, he muttered something that sounded like... Oh, a dumb cluck like you will never get hurt. And he rushed off toward the hangar. And he's probably trying to find Mike Mancuso. Well, what's all this mystery about? Look, you had some bombs on your ship when you went up, didn't you? Sure I did. I had a load of dummy bombs. Oh, you think they were dummy bombs, but they weren't. At least not all of them. One was a live bomb. I'm going to jump in Jerusalem. A live bomb? Are you sure? Just as you were leaving the ground, this Mike Mancuso came running up to me and said he had something important to say. I had an awful time getting it out of him, but... Well, finally he confessed he had substituted a life bomb for one of the dummy ones. Oh, great Scott. Why, if I'd made that crash... Sure, I'd... if you'd made that crash speed, you and Harry Phelps would have been in a thousand pieces by now. Oh, no wonder you tried to signal me down, Jim. But, gee, that was a terrible chance you took doing that crash yourself. Why, well, your ship didn't even have any padding in the cockpits, and you weren't wearing any special clothes. I really don't see how you got out of it without being badly hurt, if, if not killed. Oh, I had it all figured out. I had it doped out that if I could hit so as to take all of the force of the crash, first on one wing and then the other, the fuselage wouldn't crumple up very badly. Uh, you had the right idea there. Well, the only thing was that when I dove past you, I had a lot more speed than I'd figured on having, and that made it a little bit tough. Yeah, a little bit tough. Why, every mile of extra speed you had added that much more to the danger. Well, I didn't dare to bank around and come down again with less speed because I was afraid that in the meantime you'd come in and make the crash yourself. Yeah, you're right there, Jim. I had no idea what you were trying to do. I would have gone on right down and cracked into that hut. Well, what about that bomb? Where's Stuart? Right over here, Robertson. I want you to come over to my ship with me. I just landed. Let's investigate this bomb business. Yes, I'm anxious to do that myself. Now, you feel able to walk, Jim? Yes, I, I think I can, Speed. Now, oh, wait a minute now. Let, let me get up. Here, I'll help you, Alan. No, let me get up myself. If I can do that, I, I know I'm all right. There. Well, I guess I'm okay, Speed. I feel as though I'd been playing about five hours of pro football, but outside of that, I'm okay. Oh, oh where's Roy? He's over there talking to his father. Ah, Harry was in an awfully bad way, Jim. I looked back at him just after you did that crash, and his face was as white as a sheet. And he's absolutely crazy about that kid. Ah, oh, Roy's all right, believe me. When I told him I was going to do the crash, he took it without a whimper. Yeah, that kid's got good stuff in him, Jim. I think you were right. He'll amount to something worthwhile if he has half a chance. Well, here's the ship. Where are those bombs, Robertson? Well, they were slung underneath the wings. There were four of them. Oh, yes, I remember now. We had them made up in the property department at the studio. They're constructed out of balsa wood, made up in the shape of bombs and painted green. Yeah. We'll have to get down on our hands and knees in order to get at them. Mm -hmm. Oh, there they are. I see them. Right next to the landing gear. Uh, here we are. Uh, I can... I can reach the first one. Here. I'll pull it down. Huh. Well, that's no live bomb, I can tell you that. Nothing in the world but balsa wood could be as light as that for its size. The next one looks just the same. Yeah, I think it is. Here. Ah. 
Yeah, that one's a dummy, all right. Yeah, and the third one looks just like the other two. Yeah, I think it is, too. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that one's a dummy, too. Hey, look, Speed. This last one doesn't look quite the same. And see, it's fastened up more securely than the others. Oh, by George, I believe you're right, Jim. Now, wait, let's be careful now. I wouldn't want to yank this thing down and have it go off. Well, I should say not. Now, huh. well, boys, this is no dummy, I can tell you that. You see how smooth those sides are? Uh -huh. Well, that's steel, not wood. I've seen plenty of these before. This is a hundred-pound demolition bomb, filled with high explosive and fused to go off at impact. Great Scott, we'd have all been killed. Oh, look, here comes Flash running over. Hey, fellas, what do you know about this? Oh, what, Flash? I've been hunting for this Mike Mancuso. He's pulled out bag and baggage. Left on a mail truck at noon. A disastrous tragedy was averted by Jimmy's quick wittedness. But who was back of Mike Mancuso? Don't miss the next air adventure of Jimmy Allen. <laughs> <laughs>